One of my favorite topics in the CCDA series I recorded here at CBT Nuggets is IPv6. But there wasn't a whole lot of time to do any implementation demonstrations for IPv6 because, of course, we were talking about design. In this CBT Micro Nugget, I'm going to guide you through an implementation of EIGRP for IPv6 on a couple of real Cisco routers. Let's get started. It really is amazing how much you can do and experiment with with just two routers. I've got R5 and R5 is connected to R1. They are connected via their 1 slash 0 fast Ethernet interfaces. Now, we are going to go ahead and drop into this topology, as I said, EIGRP, and we'll use Autonomous System 100, kind of the ubiquitous autonomous system everyone likes to use for EIGRP, and this is going to be a completely IPv6 only environment. That's right, we will run no version 4 anywhere, and we'll see all kinds of fun things that we're going to experience when doing this. Now, let's go ahead and add a loopback 1 on R1, by the way, and we'll advertise the IPv6 address of this loopback into the topology so that we can make sure EIGRP for IPv6 is actually working. We'll know it's working, of course, when we see that loopback one prefix over on the R5 device. Well, let's jump to the command line and have some fun with the next generation of EIGRP. Well, let's go to R5 first. And just to show you that there's absolutely nothing up my sleeve here, I'm going to do show IP interface brief. And you see that, yep, everything's completely unconfigured from an IPv4 perspective. And if I do show IPv6 interface brief, you see that nothing has been configured from an IPv6 perspective. Now, first things first, we know that we want to do IPv6 unicast routing protocols. So go to global configuration mode and say, I want to turn on unicast routing capabilities for v6 on this device. Now what we'll do is we'll do a logical kind of step by step. I call it my baby step approach. First things first, let's make sure we can create an IPv6 circuit between these two devices and ping, right? Before we go in and do routing protocols, let's make sure we have basic connectivity. I'll say IPv6 address 2001 colon, and we'll call this the 51 colon 51 network. And I'll just go ahead and assign the host portion of the address here for simplicity. We know in an actual implementation, we would do the EUI 64 style of host addressing that I talk all about in the CCDA series here at CBT Nuggets. We'll now do a no shot. Okay, we're done here, we'll end, and we're going to go over to now the R1 device and configure that side of the circuit. So here we go, once again, our test show IP interface brief, good, nothing there, show IPv6 interface brief, nothing there, awesome. So let's go into the fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 interface. IPv6 address is 2001 colon 51 colon 51 colon colon 1 slash 64. We will no shut this interface. And before we forget, IPv6 unicast routing. Okay, so we should be able to do our ping test now. This is like step one or the verification of step one. We'll do 51, 51, colon, colon, 5. Can we ping our neighbor? And we can. So we should be able to meet success now in a routing protocol situation because we've confirmed reachability. By the way, let me go and create that loopback 1 that we talked about. And that will be IPv6 address 2001. Watch your typing on those IPv6 addresses, and we'll call this the 1, 1, colon, colon, 1 uh, address. Okay, great. So let's sit right here at R1 then and go with our 
EIGRP for IPv6 configuration. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, well, let's think about this now. Oh my goodness, how is it configured? Oh, it's configured under interfaces. EIGRP for IPv6 is going to be configured under interfaces. There is no more network command. So let me go under 1 slash 0 and say IPv6 EIGRP. How we doing? Oh, okay. It'll take an autonomous system number now. And... That's it. So we just enable it by saying IPv6 EIGRP100. How cool. We'll go into loopback1 and we will repeat that command. How are we doing though? Are we actually running EIGRP for V6? Show IPv6 protocols. This will be a good check. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's nothing running uh, as far as a routing protocol goes. So we've enabled those interfaces for EIGRP AS100, but nothing's happening. Well, interesting thing, IPv6 router EIGRP100. We are now in router configuration mode for EIGRP. The, the process defaults to a shutdown state. So we will want to do a no shutdown under the process. Wow, that could certainly be a gotcha. And something else, remember I said there was no IPv4 in our scenario whatsoever? Well, we are going to need a router ID for EIGRP. Let's see, I think the command would be EIGRP router ID, and it is. We are going to need a router ID for EIGRP that's 32 bits, ironically enough. And since there was no V4 addressing in place in our scenario, it couldn't draw one of those 32-bit addresses for the router ID. So I'll take care of this by just manually assigning one. Remember, our goal is to not have any V4 in this scenario. Okay, well, let's see if that did the trick. We'll rerun our show IPv6 protocols. Oh boy, that did seem to do the trick. Now we have all this great information about EIGRP for IPv6. All right, great. All we need to do now is replicate this over on R5. Here we go. So I'm going to go into the fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 interface. I'm going to say IPv6 EIGRP 100. I'm going to exit that. I'm going to say IPv6 router EIGRP100. I'm going to say no shutdown. I'm going to say EIGRP router ID is 5555. I'm going to end this configuration. Look at that. We have the reporting of a new adjacency, just like we would have in an IPv4 EIGRP world. If I do a show IPv6 EI whoops, <laughs> show IPv6 route, and I want to restrict it just to the EIGRP routes, we see we have dynamically learned of that remote loopback IP address and the final test, drum roll please, blah, 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 blah. all right, that was awful, uh, can we ping it? And of course, we can ping that remote loopback thanks to EIGRP for IPv6. So what did we do in this micro nugget? Well, we enabled EIGRP for IPv6 in an R5 and R1, including a loopback one routing environment, and we said no to IPv4. There was no IPv4 anywhere in the scenario, and we saw one gotcha that cropped up as a result of that, and it was the router ID assignment for EIGRP for IPv6. Well, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.